Hello world, my name is Balesa Molife, Miss Botswana 2021. I hail from a country with the most diverse tourism offerings, home to some of the best athletes in the world. I come from the diamond capital of the world, Botswana. I was raised by a fighter, a woman who not only fought for herself, but for everyone around her. She sees the good in everyone, the sunlight in every storm, and she has heavily influenced who I am today. I'm a product of love, peace, and cultural traditions. And in that, I had to discover how I wanted to navigate the world. I'm going to shower the scorpion. Please don't hurt it. One thing I chose how to navigate this world is to find strength in art, strength in expression. I chose commitment. I chose resilience. I chose sacrifice. I chose love. I chose to stay grounded and I chose change. So why do I think of my Botswana? I think of a loving people. I think of joyous celebrations, celebrating triumphs, big or small. I think of stories and dance. I think of a place where dreams are nurtured and where boundaries are succeeded. So who is Palisa? I'm an agent of empowerment. I am a passionate children's welfare advocate. I am a proud representative of my country, Botswana. And I am a young diamond that was unearthed from the land of Botswana. I am beauty with a purpose. I just have, have, have to ask. <laughs> what is sululating? Okay. <laughs> Okay, so this is ululating, okay? I'm so sorry. You're okay. Is it really loud? It's really loud, but in my country, <laughs> ululating is a way we show a joyous celebration and we celebrate anything. So we celebrate triumphs, big or small, from a wedding to a baby shower to you graduating or getting your first car. Mm -hmm. And I think the great importance of it is not only do we welcome and celebrate diversity, we empower it. So that's definitely why ululating is a big part of me. And I know I've been making a lot of noise for you ladies. <laughs> yeah, because I, I ululate all the time because I'm so happy and so grateful to be here. And I just think like people from Botswana understand completely why, because it's such a big part of our hearts and a big part of our culture. Oh, I love it. Thank you I so much. I love it, love it, love it. We're so going to practice you. that. He's, he's going to practice I that. I got you. Lessons tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> Thank you, Botswana. Pleasure. Now, Botswana. What is the best piece of advice you could give the next generation? The best piece of advice I would give to the next generation. When I think of the future leaders of tomorrow, I think of innovators. I think of people who are going to break boundaries and succeed things that have already been met. I think of people who think outside of the box. I think of people who want to include different communities in projects that will propel us forward to be more technologically advanced and socially aware of our surroundings. I would urge the next generation to be those people. I would urge them to make seats next to them on the table, to create space for bigger conversations to be had. People are different. We all have different minds. We think so differently to one another, and that's the beauty of us as a people. Let's include one another in those conversations so that we can come up with even greater solutions to the problems that we have right now. Thank you. Thank you, Botswana.
Next, Botswana. Well, as a Kolonghua Huituta. In my language, that translates, you go to school to learn. And I know that in all our different languages, we have heard that growing up. We go to school to absorb information, to learn and to be guided by our teachers. And I feel as though those teachers have a superpower. They have the ability to mold a child's way of thinking and viewing and understanding the world, which is why my project is called Lojo Losalimeti. This also directly translates into nurture them when they are young. I believe that when you go to school, you go to a place where you are going to be uplifted, you are going to be taught and you are going to be guided. And I also believe in the importance of that being a safe space for a child to grow. So my mental health project has to do with securing the clear communication and safe space of a child growing up. The first step is teachers. We will have stress management and personal development for teachers so that they are able to handle children and how they eloquently view their opinions and how they want to be heard. The second step is to deal with the children. The children are taught to eloquently put aside and know how to communicate with their teachers. And the third step is the parents. The parents are taught how to receive the children and receive their emotions and know how to handle the children. Why do we go through these three steps? We go through them to create an ecosystem that is cohesive and that helps the nurturing and growing and the grooming of the young children. I believe that mental health is as important as learning and being informed. And I believe when these components are put together, it is a formula and a recipe for unlocking great potential and making sure that our children are nurtured into becoming great, great contributors of our society. Thank you. Now we have Vietnam. Thank you, Mongolia. Now, Botswana. Hello once again. It is an immutable fact that Puerto Rico is a country that is very proud of itself. Puerto Rico is a great example of a nation and a people that are proud of their culture, are proud of their history, and are excited and fighting for who they want to become in the future. It is, an, it is an immutable fact and also evident in everywhere we go from the ruins and the buildings that we see that are preserved. And these are preserved to tell us a story every single time of where they've come from. And they keep it there to remind us that they are proud of who they are. From the grand museums where the constitutions are celebrated in hallways of the women and men who played the part in making Puerto Rico who it is, to the glass bulletproof ceilings that protect those constitutions and of those people and who they are. And I am a proud Mozana standing here sending love from Mozana to Puerto Rico and thank you for letting me celebrate this moment with you.
Hello world, I'm Olivia Yase. I'm 23 years old and I hold a bachelor's degree in marketing and management. I'm Miss Côte d'Ivoire 2021 and I'm on the way to Miss World. Follow me. Bref les me, Olivia Yase. Nana, habla poco. Ya nouma, yo les me. Who marked the history of my region and my country thanks to her sacrifice, her bravery, and her dignity. Have you heard of Côte d'Ivoire? this beautiful country in West Africa, cocoa. I come from the country which is the largest producer and exporter of cocoa beans in the world. Football, I come from the country of Didier Drogba, a great international player known for his talent and his track record. The Notre Dame de la Paix Basilica. I come from the country where the largest basilica in the world is located. It is precisely in Yamoussoukro, the capital of my country. Do you like dancing? Wait until you see one of our amazingly beautiful and technical dance masks, Zaouli. It is a true bearer of cultural identity. In this regard, my country, the Côte d'Ivoire, has about 60 ethnic groups, each rich in their own way, from north to south, from east to west. You'll discover customs and traditions enriched by time. Let me share with you a glimpse of the beauty and diversity of our landscapes. Beaches, savannas, mountains, streams, and rivers. Not to mention primary forests where there is exceptional flora and fauna. Ah, I almost forgot to tell you about my sweet tooth. Of course, I want to talk about our gastronomy. It is as varied as our identities and is suitable for uniting our differences. She has a special something. She is my number one. She's unique and her energy is very contagious. She's the life of the party. And she's just so funny. She's always been devoted and caring. She has always brought joy into our home. I now invite you to my home in my privacy, finding myself and recharging my batteries with my loved ones, my pillar is essential. Little secret, do not repeat it especially to anyone. In my family, we all share a passion for singing. Besides, my uncle, who is also my godfather, is a great artist at heart. I am very grateful for this education I received, which allowed me to open up to the world, but also to accept and affirm my identity. In my turn, I would like to help by carrying my voice to bring my support to all minorities, vulnerable people, and by fighting against discrimination of all kinds so that each individual in their uniqueness can flourish in the plurality of the world. Assuming your identity is a responsibility. responsibility. Côte d'Ivoire, how are you? I'm great, thank you, Tony. You know, watching your video, you said something very quickly, but I did catch it. You said you're the granddaughter of a queen. Habla poco, yes. It's incredible. Can you speak to us about that? Of course. So, my in my video, I decided to say that I am the descendant of Abla Puku. And Abla Puku is a very famous African and Ivorian queen known for her rare beauty, but truly for her heart, for her bravery, and for her courage. And I briefly tell her story, which is the story of a queen who has to run away from enemies with her people and is faced with a very difficult choice of sacrificing her only son to save an entire population. And I'm so proud and honored to be part of that ethnic group, royal ethnic group called Les Akans Baolé. And today I'm wearing the symbolic crown with the gold elements to represent my culture, my history, and to embody Abla Poku herself. And her story is a story that I grew up with. It's a story that really inspires me on a daily basis. And I really wanted to, to highlight the power and the impact that women have in our society. And I just, I just think it's a beautiful thing. And I really hope through my video that it will inspire young girls like it inspired me and that they will aspire themselves to be strong, independent and brave leaders in their society. Yes, oh Cote d'Ivoire, that's a beautiful story. Thank you. We're so, so, so proud of you. Thank and you. I know that your family, that, that your family is so excited yeah. to see the way that you've embodied all that your 
great ancestor has yeah. done, and you now have her strength within your bones, yes. and you're lit up with just love and positivity and light. Yeah. Thank uh, you so much. Thank Canada. you. Cote d'Ivoire, it is your turn. What is the most important thing parents should tell their children? Wow. You know, parents are such a huge blessing in kids' lives. I know my parents are such a huge blessing in mine and trees of knowledge. And um, I just think the most important advice that parents could give to their kids is to embrace themselves, embrace who they are, and no matter what, never apologize for being who you are, you know? Because when you know who you are, when you know where you come from, and when you know where you're going, you're unstoppable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, being unapolog unapologetically exactly. yourself, that's what's gonna get you the farthest because no one can be you better than yourself. Exactly.
Next, Cote d'Ivoire. Raise your hand with me if you believe that everybody deserves access to education. So when I went to these girls in my country and I saw that they were robbed, robbed of their dignity, of their innocence, of their women rights, telling their parents telling them that they shouldn't go to school, that they don't have a place in school, that they should stay at home, be housewives, get chores. It made me see the opportunity that we have and how fortunate we are to have education. And it just made me want to help them even more. So when I got the crown of Miss Côte d'Ivoire, I looked for these girls and I went out there to see what they wanted to do what motivated them and what motivates them is people like me people like miss mexico people like miss south africa miss Botswana, who have a dream for them who just need to pave the way for them to give them access to this brighter future that they need and that they deserve and that is what my project is about it's about women's rights it's about giving them the education they need because education is so important in a kid's life and it's such an important determinant of who they will be in the future. Thank you. Cote d'Ivoire. Ladies and gentlemen, it is quite simple for a Puerto Rican to advertise for their country, but for someone else from another country like me from Cote d'Ivoire to advertise is a whole different story. I've been here for two, going on three weeks, and I can say that I feel right at home. It's so welcoming, the weather, the people, y me encantada por la hospitalidad, la cultura, la belleza, somos un paraíso. And I've had the opportunity to talk with the mayor of Rio Grande, and I mentioned that my dad is also the mayor of the biggest city in Cote d'Ivoire, so I understand the hard work, the dedication that comes with his position. So I was so happy to have a conversation with him. I was happy to take a picture of him, send it to my country, tell them all about the beautiful places I've visited in Puerto Rico, Matalagata, El Dorado, Old San Juan, and everybody watching back home, I really hope that visiting Puerto Rico is on your New Year's resolution list because it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> 